Welcome back to the Racing Mind video series, where we journey deeper into the human mind than anyone has ever gone before. In this video series, we untangle the ancient mystery of mental illness and teach you what you need to know before your racing mind gets the best of you. This groundbreaking series provides answers to some of the deepest mysteries of the human mind and reveals, for the first time in history, the precise cause of mental and emotional illness and the psychophysiological basis of a wide range of psychiatric disorders and associated medical conditions. These educational videos, which present concepts that are so new that they are just beginning to make their way through the medical field, are based on thousands of hours of direct patient analysis and clinical observation in conjunction with the latest research on psychiatric disorders from around the world. In the first video of this series, we introduced the idea that gene variants were the primary predisposing factor for the development of various psychiatric symptoms during the transition from childhood to adulthood and other high stress periods. In this video, we discuss how the gene variants make a person vulnerable to the development of these symptoms. Genes are complex molecules that carry the instructions for the proteins that serve various functions in the body. Polymorphisms are variants of specific genes that have somewhat altered instructions, thus leading to the assembly of partially defective proteins. When a person inherits a gene polymorphism that encodes a protein that helps regulate the firing of neurons, the neurons are rendered hyperexcitable. What we call psychiatric symptoms are produced when normal signaling in the brain is abnormally perpetuated by hyperexcitable neurons. For example, if an anxiety circuit does not shut off, a person will experience persistent anxiety. If a depression circuit does not shut off, a person will experience persistent depression. If an irritability circuit does not shut off, a person will experience persistent anger. The same applies to cognitive circuits. If they don't shut off, a person will experience repetitive or racing thoughts. Note, however, that it is not the brain that experiences these thoughts and feelings, but the person. The brain is merely a biological processor that relays electrical signals between the mind and the body. That leads to the question, what is the distinction between the mind and the body? The body, of which the brain is a part, is a biological machine that serves and transports the mind from one place to another just as a car serves and transports the driver. Actually, the mind is just one part of the spiritual body just as the brain is just one part of the physical body. The spiritual body is the energetic essence or soul of the physical body. Like the physical body, the spiritual body has eyes, ears, arms, legs, a heart, and all the other parts that the physical body has. Thus, when we see something with our physical eyes, what is actually happening is that light is passing through the pupils of our physical eyes and stimulating neurons that transport the message to our spiritual eyes. Our spiritual eyes then relay the message to our mind, just as our physical eyes relay the message to our brain. The mind, which as we have said, is seated in the brain like a driver in a car, governs the spiritual body just as the brain governs the physical body. If it were not for the spiritual body, the physical body would be dead. What we call thinking is a dialogue between the mind and the brain. Mental impulses stimulate neurons in the brain, and neurons in the brain stimulate impulses in the mind. The mind then relays these messages to the spiritual heart, which in turn relays the messages back to the mind. That the spiritual heart, which is located in the same area as the physical heart, experiences and processes our emotions in parallel to the brain is the only possible way to explain the fact that we experience our emotions in our chest, 
even though the physical body processes them in the head where the brain is located. When the brain is hyperexcitable, it sends too many messages to the mind. This draws the mind into sending too many messages to the brain. Consequently, the mind and the brain tend to get caught in a vicious cycle of mutual overstimulation that can cause various thoughts and feelings to keep replaying like a broken record. Emotional breakdowns occur when the overabundance of neural signaling becomes mentally and emotionally intolerable. Of course, severe stress can potentially cause anyone to have a nervous breakdown, but persons who are born with hyperexcitable neurons are particularly vulnerable, and this vulnerability is created by inheritance of one or more of the gene polymorphisms that have been linked to neuronal hyperexcitability. In the third video of this series, we will discuss how the genes for neuronal hyperexcitability are passed down and segregated in families. Then, in the subsequent videos of the series, we'll discuss how neuronal hyperexcitability can cause the various symptoms that have been grouped into the various psychiatric disorders. Most importantly, we'll discuss simple and direct ways to eliminate those symptoms and prevent them from recurring. We hope that you are benefiting from this video series. Portions of the video and others in the series were taken from the books The Racing Mind and Am I Depressed or Am I Bipolar? Those interested in developing a deeper understanding of the topic can also refer to the scientific publication The Multi-Circuit Neuronal Hyperexcitability Hypothesis of Psychiatric Disorders. Please note that these materials in this video series are for educational purposes only and are not intended to guide treatment without formal evaluation. This video series is sponsored by the Binder Foundation, a charitable organization that is dedicated to the enhancement of human life through research and education on disorders of the mind, body, and spirit. If you have found this video to be a benefit to you, please share it with your family and friends. And please don't forget, your feedback is important to us.